This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Just, just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. wait. Live from the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, 586 nights of uh, Tuesday nights of pro wrestling celebration and fans and so much more. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter uh, here in the in, in the Pittsburgh area, get, gathering this, this amazing crew tonight, including uh, we're uh, uh, joined remotely, I'm sorry, Mike. Mad Mike from Poughkeepsie, New York. The only one here with a future endeavored letter from the WWE. I think that's true. That's still true tonight, right? That is always true, Sorg. Um, if anything that has stayed constant about me is I'm constantly losing jobs. <laughs> Sorg. <laughs> Consistently know. unemployed. Aren't we Mad all? Mike. So, um, uh, Sorg, I'm going to be using every time you cut to me on a camera, I will be stealing someone else's gimmick from Mayhem Show's past in honor of Dolph Ziggler. Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and hopefully it'll be far, far more interesting. Also, uh, we got we got kind of a shared mic situation over here. <laughs> we got we got Larry hanging out with Rob, a cameraman Rob, over on the other end of the studio. Hi guys. Hey, what's up? Hello. Love the mic. Be friends with the mic and each other. <laughs> This is like the most how many, awkward. How many times have you said that one, Sorg? There you go. There you go. And of course, Chad the Chad on the couch hanging out. Hello, everyone. He's back. Yes. He's back. Is this still hockey season for you or roller hockey or no, whatever it is I'm that done. you do? I'm done. On Tuesdays? I'm done now. Yeah. Okay. And also joining Chad on the couch. He's a Pittsburgh wrestling legend. I don't know about that. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Sure. I always Doe. get super uncomfortable when people say Surely that. Doe is with us. Thank you for having me. You were at that. You were at my first independent wrestling show. Really? Yes. A lot of people tell me that, and they're like, "I was really afraid of you because I saw you break somebody's jaw." And I'm like, "Oh, I don't even remember." I'm sure, I guess. <laughs> we'll get into that. We'll get into that on the Indie Mayhem Show later. Yeah. Uh, but this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, you can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Please subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Google Play Podcast, as well as the video versions on YouTube and Facebook. And uh, check out everything else at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. All the other shows, including the Indie Mayhem Show interviews and our shows over for about plenty of wrestling shows, probably more than we should do, Raw, Lucha Underground, and the like. And also, please uh, drop us a line if you like at the uh, email address. Really? Just Mike? <laughs> really? We have Come so many on, people guys. here. Step <laughs> it up. I'm sorry, what? Really? Yeah, like you guys. What, the you're right. supposed to. I, I, I miss Mike. I miss Mike. Good, good times. You missed your cue. Yeah, you guys could have at least harmonized. Good times. Let's try it again. One We've been only again. been doing this for 10 years. Let's try it again. Treat that shit like the O'Neaters. You can. Okay. Well, I'm leaving on you to so make sure you do it. <laughs> <laughs> you can hit us up at the email address. Good times. Good, 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 good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. No, the taco stand is closed. Oh, got a really oh, good view of it. That? Or hit us up at 412 206 WMS0, Twitter at Mayhem Show. And of course, uh, please be part of the Facebook group at Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, so that uh, you can be part of the conversation there. And uh, check us out every Tuesday night. Uh, you can get to us at live.wrestlingmamshow.com or just drop into the Facebook page. And we are uh, attempting to stream at a few more places. I see some people joining us over on our YouTube page as well as Periscope. So we're uh, spreading the mayhem everywhere wow. due to some new technologies that we're hooking up tonight, our maiden voyage on this. So if you join us live, what's up? Unfortunately, uh, the main chat room that we are in is, is the Facebook uh, live chat room at Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook. So if we're not entirely seeing you over there, uh, there's a reason. We're, we're in like five different places right now. We're even on Twitch right now uh, and seeing how that kind of stuff works out. But anyways, also thank you to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show, including the fan of, fan of the show dollar level. Bo diggity! Woo! 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody got that cue. Wait, did you did you guys? What, what are you? Sorry, we were looking at your comments from the. Uh, Sorry, he paid. He paid for that cue. He, he did pay for that cue. Uh, uh, so and also our friend <laughs> Alex Carr is at Power to the Smarts Occupy Pro Wrestling has been doing some great stuff with the podcast over there including an interview um, with the crew that I can't remember their name that are doing a burlesque show from the Wrestle Factory on iPay-Per-View a uh, great interview about wrestling and, and, and burlesque and kind of how that relates uh, so definitely check out their latest podcast there also Bobby F. J. Town at the dollar level at the Pocky Club five dollar level Tina Keys Brandon and Christopher, and at the Pizza Club, ten dollar level, Billy F and Johnson. And Billy, thank you for the gifts that uh, were you gave us over on uh, the Raw wrap up last night. He joined us over there. We had a lot of fun on Monday night in the in the Facebook Live. So uh, with that, let's get into topics of the week. Uh, and so uh, I think I think most of us have seen through the quarterfinals at least. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So for the most part, <clears throat> we'll not go beyond that, except for encoded messages. Uh, right, Mad Mike? Wait, we can't go beyond. Oh, motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> God damn all you people! Oh, the finals are next week. This is true. This is true. I mean, it is like four hours uh, of wrestling on top of the three hours of wrestling on top of the other two hours of the wrestling on top of, well, I kind of caught Ring of Honor for the first time in a while this week. So it's, 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 right, it's well, understandable. Wrong. You watch Ring of Honor. I mean, you watch the wrong wrestling show. <laughs> as, as a, no, 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 I finished it. I'm just being respectful to other people in the room. Damn it, I was watching Fuck Superstars. other people. <laughs> <laughs> I went back and watched the eight in from the vaults. I mean, ask me any question <laughs> yeah. about 1987. No, okay. Who was uh, the Mariner? <laughs> <laughs> or Furface? Well, Larry, first of all, you you had some kind of off posi uh, uh, position on on the May Young Classic last weekend. You said you've come around uh, going through the quarterfinals. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I didn't like Shayna Baszler in the uh, her first match because. The first round seemed a lot like the Cruiserweight Classic where there were no heels or baby faces. Everybody was just competing, like even footing, uh, no dirty tricks or anything like that. And that's what the first round of the Mae Young Classic felt like, with the exception of Shayna Baszler's match, which seemed like a push for somebody that didn't know how to wrestle. I kind of like that about her, though, is that, like, except for one thing, like, she, like, Right in the beginning, like she got bumped like really super soon. Yeah. And I was like, just stay on your feet. Everything's cool. Like you don't have to give anybody anything. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the agenting felt better the second, the quarterfinals. Yeah. And af after I realized like, that, like that's what they were doing, mm -hmm. and like, I don't know, she could actually wrestle. I found yeah. that out too. Because yeah, she it, did some shimmer could, shows. You didn't see stuff. that in the first match. Well, I think the other thing too, the first round, I didn't like the first round as much. Like there were good matches. But I think 32 people, male or female, is too many people to be in a tournament. You're never going to have people that aren't at the same level. And, like, the 16 people – well, the, the quarterfinals were great. And, like, I liked almost all of the matches. Mm -hmm. But there were some of the first-round ones where I was like oh, – and, and, yeah. and when it, you can say going through the rest of it, like, it gets, like, better. You're like, oh, crap. I just saw, saw the same person wrestle, like, pretty much three times in a row. Yeah. And you're completely – Completely okay with it by the time you get to that point. Yeah. Now, when you I, say with that first round, does the format play into that too? Do you think? I, I like, like that they're doing like the the reality show format though of yeah. showing the people, but it's just like some of the matches just were bad matches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I just I mean kind of like the whole because that, that whole first round was, it was like four matches a show. Right? Oh yeah. So it's all just I, seven eight. It's neat matches. seeing. I think here's the thing: if I was a, a younger person watching it, like when I was a kid. All I wanted to do was see new wrestlers. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like when new people showed up on Superstars, it was like the great, the week that Sid and Flair's belt showed up the same week. Like I remember we were on vacation in Florida and we literally like tore a wall off our hotel room. <laughs> like we just like, like there's like a laundry room. My brother I just ran through it. And, and in those cases, they're usually ripping apart some nobody too. And it's not yeah. just somebody else in a tournament where it's like, yeah. well, how am I supposed to think this is one of the best in the world? If I love, that is the best, that is the best reaction to wrestling I've ever like, heard I, of. Seriously, there's been times in wrestling where I've just run out to the street and just started screaming and like, like punching the can, like Dragon Ball Z kind of stuff. I'm married now, so I can't like get that excited. But I realize I say stuff the whole time I watch it. My wife does a great impression. She's like, nice. Wow. Nah, -uh, no. What are you doing? <laughs> and there's just a lot of me, just like that's my commentary on stuff. So, 
I there's a lot of that nice. Like Lita's commentary. <laughs> <laughs> I had to wrestle her. Not to. Uh, what a maneuver! I wrestled her when because we were in one of the funk dojos together, the first non-fed one, and they were like, "Hey, uh, we got a people tonight. Can you work?" I had to wrestle her. She was wrestling heel, and I was wrestling baby. And they're like, "Try to put a match together." And I'm like, "Okay," because like, it's like, "How do you do that?" So. It was not a good match. <laughs> Long story short, probably more my fault. But it was just like, I had no idea how to be a baby face against someone that was half my size that didn't know how to do much yet outside of Lucha. <laughs> she didn't. My, it's funny. So we were watching the I said, my wife, I was like, you know, I was in the Funk Dojo with her. She goes, oh, well, she's in the Hall of Fame on TV. You're sitting on the couch drinking a La crew. How'd that work out for you? <laughs> yeah, my wife's like the best heel ever. She's like, why, why didn't you ever do this? I'm like, don't think I could. Oh, you could, but you didn't. So, what's your oh, wow. wrestling? What's your wrestling, baby? I mean, she's much I nicer. Well, if you've got a great coming out of this, Arios. What, what's that, man, Mike? I, I said I thought he would have looked great coming out of this, Arios. Yeah, there, you know, there you go. There you go. I mean, I remember being so excited when SA Rios debuted, and like the the spirit of euphoria lasted about forty five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> he got betters out at Aguila, but whatever. I remember when he was in his first video game. Oh, yeah. I was like, S.A. Rios has made it. I can play as S.A. Rios. Was he, like, uh, his character that's, that's how you. That's how you can tell like if you forget when a game came out. Was he in 2000? <laughs> a guy like S.A. Rios is on. WWE 2000? I think so. He, was in, he had white pants, which but, I don't think he ever wore. I played wrestling <laughs> games with, guy, with the same like five people for like 20 years, which is both exciting and sad. And and there's always like a big draft when a new one comes out, and it's always like, oh, well, I'm going to get S.A. Rios. It has never been said <laughs> <laughs> in any of our drafts. This year, it's like, well, hey, Rick Martel's in it this year, and there's like a fucking war to get Rick Martel. And there's like a question, well, is it Rick Martel, model Rick Martel, or is it the Rick Martel that fought the flock, which is my favorite Rick Martel? And nobody remembers. Like He had like two matches with Booker T, and then he feuded with the flock, and he was like, Raven, you are misfit. And I do not like your band of beast fits. And I'm like, fucking love Rick Martel's baby face. <laughs> and then he blew his knee out. With the greatest baby face. Anyway, sorry. I know May Young Classic. No, no, no. <laughs> See that segue? Yeah, that, that fits. That's that a good segue. That ab- <laughs> absolutely fits. So, so the May Young Classic is like uh, uh, Rick Martel's run. I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I love Rick Martel's Is there, is there so a strike for us, Rick Martel, in the game? Uh, no, yeah, I think okay, it's going to be modeled. And Rick then do you feel Martell. obligated to get Tito? <laughs> They have never put Tito in the games. Uh, but I, I think recently. He was they? in Legends of Wrestling. Okay. All but, right. No, trust me. If Tito was in it, someone would have been Tito. Because my brother always picks. My brother is pre- prescient, I should say, because he he has used Ginger Mahal for the last four years. Oh. And, and, and like... And he's like, he has this crew of Indian dudes that all do neck breakers, <laughs> led by the great Kali, and he makes outfits for them and everything. And John Cena somehow fits into this group, too. Don't ask me. I'm why. just picturing the great Kali doing neck breakers. Has he met the Riz? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, <know. laughs> I think they would get along. I think this is Riz's new best There's friend. There's nothing like having someone shit talk on you when they defeat you in a Hell in a Cell with Jinder Mahal. Because he's really, <laughs> really good at the game. And he gets really good with people that, that are not good, like guys that are like ranked at like 45 and 50 out of 100. And then he will beat John C- Like If you're like Randy Orton, he'll squash you with Jinder Mahal. Like uh, before Jinder Mahal was good in the game. Like any, I love it because he always picks. He's like, who's this guy? Because he doesn't watch any of the shows anymore. And I'm like, that's, you know, I, some guy from NXT. He's mine. Like the, the Ascension. Like when he I, saw I, the, I will craft him. So yeah, when he saw the Ascension, he was like, I can turn these. He's like Gary Hart in Texas. He's like, let me produce these guys. So, so is, is he going to be really surprised with this year's version of the game when Jinder's actually pretty He's going to be upset. Because oh, okay. they're probably going to take his neck break. He's going to go all hipster on it? Or? Yeah. It's a Jinder Mahal hipster. There, there's no, always Heath Slater. Yeah, he doesn't like Heath Slater. It's a, it's a weird. Because we've talked to him about other guys where, like, where you're really going to love this guy. And he's like, no. It's like it's a it's a crapshoot. <laughs> no he would hate all so, of the May Young class. So who do you think his pick is going to be this year? Is it going to be someone like like Noam Dar? It might be Noam Dar. It might be someone like the Bollywood Boys. Or seriously, a pick for him. Um, I know Mascara Dorada is going to be whatever his name is now, Mascara Metallica or whatever, because he loves Grand Lucha. Metalik. Yeah, Grand Metalik. He follows Lucha like really tight, and he knows Lucha really well. Um, to the point that he had like a half an hour conversation with Conan once about Tijuana. Whatever, you, whatever you do, do not tell him that he's now referred as 
referred to as a type of cheese. Oh, uh, he would he gets so upset about it. But there was an edit of him last year, and his they you know when you make the edits, you have to like fix the names, you know where they don't sound exactly right. And the person that made him, his name was Master Don Adams, and said him Mascara Dorada, <laughs> and it's like Master <laughs> Don Adams, and from now on, that's become Mascara Dorada's name in the in, in the game. So like anybody that has a weird edit name, like that becomes their name in wrestling forever. He would hate May Young Classic though. To get back to May Young Classic, he, I would try to. It's one of those things I would try to get him to watch it. He would just look at me like, "Nah, bro, nah." He's just not into it. Even if girls did like great high spots, he just wouldn't care. Um, speaking of high spots, I know you 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 said that you were um um pretty enamored with Kyrie Sane's elbow drop. Oh, it's awesome! Man. I think we all are here. It, uh, it's pretty. So was Big Show. It's a big show because <laughs> he took a shot at it, didn't he? It didn't look nearly as graceful. The one she did in the second round against the girl that did the hair whip stuff was like, I saw yeah. it and it's like, there's a difference between people that are wrestlers and aren't wrestlers. Like if you're not a wrestler, you're like, that looked awesome. If you're a wrestler, like, I'm not ever going to fucking take that. Because she, because she like leads with the top of her body with that. Well, thing, she landed her she? entire body on it. Like, oh. It was like the one Savage was doing once he, he was really banged up at the and the end black and red days yeah. of Savage where like you could tell how banged up Savage was by how much of his body landed on you. And it was like, oh, he landed like seven eighths of his body on the guy. Like Randy's hurt. <laughs> <tonight." laughs> like, but I know she's not. That's the other thing. Like, the elbow's awesome. I'm like, I should show my wife this match. Like this, because she was always like, I really wish girls would get a chance to wrestle. She's like, What is this girl's gimmick? <laughs> I, said, so she, weird. I said, She's a yacht captain and she's looking for treasure. She's like, <laughs> She just looked at me. <laughs> she just looked at me and I was like, Because it's awesome. Isn't that awesome? She's like, That's stupid. Like, I don't want to watch this. <laughs> listen, there are 32 new women. This is just what you get. <laughs> and when the other girl came out and had like glittery boots, she's like, this is how they should be. She's <laughs> like, she whips her hair around. That's how it's. And like, I can never tell. Like, she loves that. She loves Asuka. She actually follows Asuka on, on, uh, on uh, Instagram, which I didn't know. She's like, look, she, I'm like, why do you follow her? She's like, oh, she's cool. How did she feel about Lacey Evans? Uh, she didn't like anybody. There was literally like nobody else. She, she liked the, the one girl from Ireland, the. I don't want to be rib- the bigger Piper, Piper Nevin. Piper Nevin, yeah. yeah. I said to uh, West, to uh, Beastman, I'm like, you should really find that girl and marry her, because you guys would make the awesomest <laughs> wrestling babies. <laughs> like they would just be beating up people like Vader in, in preschool, just like big, mean. She because she does all the same moves. Like I said, my wife, like she does all Beastman's moves, and she can. Right then, she did the flip in the corner, the crush thing in the corner, and I was like. This is love. Like I, I gotta. Because <laughs> like, that's the thing. Like every, as I learned from the Mae Young Classic, every female wrestler, it's different than the guys. Like they never tell you who the guys are dating, but every girl was like, "Well, that's Chris Hero's girlfriend," and oh, by the way, that's uh, Johnny Gargano's wife, and that's you know, it's just how it is. My wife will get into the drama. Like if the more she knows about the real stuff, she's into it. But I, I thought she'd be into Mae Young Classic. She wasn't, but. I think it was the sea captain. She's like, why does she have a ship wheel? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> it's it's something Japanese. She uh, never so kids. WWE is actually yeah. remaking Captain Ron. There you oh. go. I was thinking Captain Mike Rotunda. Oh, that's a, oh, the, no. the Captain Mike t-shirt. <laughs> no. Have you ever seen the t-shirts no, they had? Then we get, yeah. then we get uh-huh. Kevin Sullivan showing up. And, that, mm. that's, and Trucker that's Norman. <laughs> oh, man, oh. Uh, we, we have the chat is going insane. Uh, <laughs> we do have a question, a legitimate question. Bobby of J Town uh, is Bianca Blair's uh, hair a foreign object? To discuss. Uh, no. Uh, no. No. It's her hair. No. Yeah. And he can't I mean, pull unless, it unless she got that extension from a different country. <laughs> Are they weighted extensions? Because then they'd be a foreign object. Mm-hmm. No, it was freaking awesome. <laughs> I will consult the, I mean, the book. The of way wrestling. I see it, it can be a detriment as much as it is a weapon. Yeah, it's just no one decided to pull on her hair. We do. We we do have a rule book over there, so I'll have to search it. I think it's, I don't think it is no glossary. Though, they said so. if you bring it in the ring and it's part of you. So I'm growing horns yeah. now for the rest of my career. <laughs> yeah. Switch well, into a spear I, finish. I guess you could go back to Cowboy Bob Orton's cast. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Alex is saying they need a uh, total divas version of NXT. Total devel dev no that doesn't work. Develop metal. No. What's funny because I was the other thing about about it was I was watching it and it's neat seeing a lot of different body types and 
different looks and different styles. And like uh, the the uh, girl who wrestled um, that did the alligator clutch, I can't remember. I'm really bad with her. Oh, um, Ab- Abby Lath. Yeah. Abby Lath. I thought she was awesome, but like I could just imagine Kevin Dunn and those guys looking at her being like, well, she looks sloppy. She doesn't. She looks like a normal human being. She's mm-hmm. attractive and mm-hmm. she's really good in the ring. But to them, it's like her body type and what they, the only type that they see as women are so night and day. Even uh, Asuka is a bit out of their body type, which is ridiculous. And it's like, that's the hardest thing of watching it. It's like, <clears throat> it's the same thing that happened with the Cruiserweight Classic. And I don't want to be negative on, on the thing, but it's like, I remember coming out of the Cruiserweight Classic, everybody was so excited. Like, they're going to get a show every week. And it's like, and now they're just going to do the same matches as everybody else. Mm-hmm. Like, if they get put into the the WWE style grinder, it's like, it's not as exciting. That's why these things are exciting. Cause it's like, we were talking it's before new. the start. It's like, it's before they wear them down or not wear them down. Yeah. But, you know, like kind of decide what they want them. There's to only be. one they way to do a hip toss and yeah. you must do a hip toss this yeah. way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's the neat thing. Now it reminds me, these tournaments, both these remind me of the old UFCs, not cause they're boring, but uh, if you ever watch the old <laughs> UFCs, guys in an arm bar yeah, for an hour, yeah. but it was like the idea. It's like the dudes would fight guys and they had like, it was like style versus style, which is what it was about. There was a guy in the first UFC whose style was ninjutsu, which is hilarious. Yeah. And he was a white guy. And he was a cop. <laughs> <laughs> he fought Emmanuel Yarbrough, that big, the 900-pound sumo guy. And like he was coming to the ring, and it said, style, ninjutsu. And I was like, this guy's going to die. I feel like that's something you'd see on American Ninja Warrior. Was he, yeah. was he part of the Cobra Kai dojo? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you better throw a smoke pellet and get the fuck out of the ring. Because Emmanuel or, Yarbrough is just going to sit on your head. Or this guy's style but, is like mall taekwondo. <laughs> yeah. I like when guys make up a style that is their style, their name. Like Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. Like, okay. <laughs> like that one makes a little bit of sense, but then they're always like, I do, you know, they're like a JKD guy that just names their style. Like mm-hmm. I do dofu, whatever that is. Um, for, for those of you that have only gone through the quarterfinals, uh, I, I'm kind of curious. And I think this will be fun since some of us have, have completed, um, completed it by now. Uh, who, who are you, who are your, your picks for the top two that go into the finals next week? Just out of the quarterfinals. Larry. I've seen the whole thing. Oh, you did see the whole thing. I did. Yeah. I think uh, my wife asked me the same thing. She's like, who do you want to win? And I was like, well, I, th- I said I like Boozler and uh, Sane were the two that I liked the most. Because I felt like they had the most upside. And then I can't wait to see all the MMA guy- girls lose at Mania to Stephanie McMahon. That's another story. <laughs> <laughs> That's another story. Yeah. But yeah, but I would like to see- I think they'd match up neat. Because I kind of base what I like about j- women's wrestling is more all Japan women's. And mm-hmm. then seeing like the the big heel girl like a Bull Nakano or a Naja Kong or a Bison Kimura, like the, that style girl against the smaller, pluckier girl, like that's the way that I see that style. And it feels like you can put a really good match together with the two of them. And there's big upside in both of them, like of, of what you do next with them. See, I, I'd like to see the opposite. I, I want I wanted to see uh, Shayna Baszler and uh, Piper Nevin. That's cool too. Yeah, because be- because she's like that unstoppable MMA lady. And then Piper Nevin's like a powerhouse that can actually like match her, you know, and not somebody that she could just throw around, right? Too, right? Yeah. So it'd be neat if they well, they did like a round robin for the last four, but that would be too many weeks. Mm-hmm. Mike, uh, I was gonna say you kind of get that with the um. I know you got. I know some of you haven't seen it yet. The Baszler versus Mercedes Martinez match. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a really good fucking match. Um, but I, I'm not gonna say who who I want to win because I know who the finals are. I'll say that every round they eliminated like two girls. I wanted to go to the finals yep. every single round. It was just very, it was very upsetting. So. I was upset when the uh, East German girl lost in the first round. Or, yeah. Or, that yeah. was a surprise. Yeah. Uh, I, th- I think that's because she was in TNA. Oh, okay. But she's, uh, when she <laughs> oh. came to the ring, like she did everything right that nobody does anymore. Mm-hmm. of like being a monster and like not getting whipped and like, just, just being tough. I was like, man, this girl's awesome. And then it was like, I, I knew, like, oh, okay, well, she does the May Young finish. But that was like kind of jazzy, whatever. I, I really liked her style and that she feels like you could bring her in at this point and she would mesh really well as a heel with the rest of the roster. She, she's like modern day China. Yeah. And, but, like, she has an aura about her. I don't think China like, – China always looked kind of awkward to me, do you know what I mean? Because she was still learning wrestling. Like, this girl looks like – she looks like Dolph Lundgren as a, as a girl. Do you know what I mean? Like, like that's how I describe it. But, it, it, yeah, strangely attractive. Um, I, I'll raise this point, and I think we raised the last last week a little bit too. I know, I know, Mike, we've been Mike and I have been talking about this. You know, between the Jazzies and the Pipers and everything, if they, say all the big girls and then the Indian girl that that I don't remember her name, 
Mm-hmm. Um, you oh, the have, real tall one. Yeah, you that rested like Holly. Um, you you have this like kind of monster women's division kind of starting now with with all of them and Nia Jax, which could make the women's division really interesting if they yeah. all came over, right? I, see, I love that, and and you have Asuka's a, a kind of like a giant killer kind of gimmick too. So, and when she's healthy, that's pretty cool. That's what I loved about All Japan Women's is there was always, like I said, that traditional, like Bull Nakano, and she came over and you know to get over uh, mm-hmm. Medusa back in the day, and like I always loved her stock because she was just like these girls were unstoppable. Do you know what I mean? And it was like really neat seeing, like you know, people using their sides against them. That's what I liked about the second round. It felt like the matches were more, more smartly put together where people's styles came into it and that they were more back and forth and more. Uh, you didn't know what was going to happen. And that's what I really liked I, about them. I, I do have a question. Um, for the guys who haven't seen all the way through, did you guys see the uh, segment with the four horsewomen? The, the WWE four horsewomen. Oh, were they the faced UFC off with the uh, MMA ones? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. The, the like segment outside? Yeah. 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 Um, so that's probably a Survivor Series match, right? Oh, that would make sense. You, you would make sense. sense. That would make sense. <laughs> you would think, yeah. but then I still see, like, they keep saying about Stephanie being the one to wrestle at Mania with, with Rousey, which, like, how does that help anybody with wrestling? So, uh, yeah. Hey, if you get Ronda Rousey in the WWE, good on you. Is that is one of the four? I, I think she, that's it, where she needs to be. Yeah. I think to survive. I, I kind of had a question, like you're saying, okay, like back in the 90s, you said when they'd bring in like Bull Nakano mm-hmm. to face off against, you know, Medusa or whatever. D- um, do you think it kind of helped her portrayal by there not really being a women's division? You know, rather than there being a bunch of women and it'd be like, okay, you're going to be the big monster. You're going to be the whatever, you know, like yeah. just having, letting them kind of not so much do their own thing, but not get pigeonholed. As... I think the thing too is like Bull was so different and had such a different look. Mm-hmm. Than everybody and like she did crazy stuff like the like drop off the top, and so and she was kind of ha- not doing half the crazy stuff she did in Japan. Mm-hmm. That she just looked so different, it kind of got her over. Mm-hmm. But and it I, seemed I, like more of an attraction. Yeah, back more then they were too. they weren't the women's matches were not being offensive, but they were treated the same way as midget matches. Mm-hmm. Where do you know what I mean? Where they were they were a special attraction match. On you're right mm-hmm. on the show. The, the other thing that's weird about the four horsemen one is like, I think t- it's going to be interesting to see how well they can work. Do you know what I mean? It's it's a lot of pressure to go into a pay per view match that quick. Is the one of the four horsemen from Cleveland? Which the blonde are one? Are you talking about the MMA people? Or yeah, the, the MMA, MMA one. I don't know the ones so, because she had a midnight shirt on. It's like a band from mm-hmm. Cleveland that nobody knows, like a like a black metal band. And I was like, cool. Either she's super into metal or she's from Cleveland. But I think there's <laughs> well, a general Bass, connection Bass, Bass, because of like AIW and everything. Bass yeah, was in AIW. Bass, things Bass, like that's what that, I was so. thinking. That she's from from around there. Yeah. I know one I think one of them's Roddy's wife, right? Is that is that Yeah, one of them is Roddy Strong's wife. So oh, that, okay. that makes that, that connection makes sense. So there's a lot of kind of WWE connections there. Um we have some of them from the chat. Larry, I don't think you know this one What's either. That? We do we do have a, a spoiler from two oh five live. Okay. Drew Gulak put Akira Tazawa in the Chikara special. It's finally happened. <laughs> <laughs> I saw them wrestling. I didn't actually watch the. Apparently, the it got good. So one, uh, you know, Akira, Akira is back. That's good to see. Mm-hmm. we were, I know, last night we were questioning on the Raw wrap up what happened to the Titus brand because they kind of disappeared over this last week. There's no Titus in there though. Oh, uh, what? There was no. Think, is it just the, a Kira? I, I, I might not have uh, caught his whole entrance, uh, uh, but I thought Bobby, it was just Bobby a... just spoiled the end of 205 Live. Damn it, Bobby. Damn it, Bobby. Well, the three yeah. people that watch it are not going to watch it now. <laughs> yeah, but two of those people are in this room. I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I wonder how much of the 205 audience right now is either watching this podcast. See, if we weren't doing the show, we could triple the viewership. Exactly. That is true too. Though. It'll, make, it'll yeah. make Tuesdays easier if they go. I try to watch it. Thursdays. I try yeah. to watch it every once in a while, and I literally make it like a half match in, and I'm like, because like I have this theory that like we only have so much money and we only have so much free time, and they both are these budgets that exist within my life, and I'm like, if I only have an hour, am I going to watch a Noam Dar match, <laughs> or am I going to watch something that I want to watch? In its defense, though, when yeah. when we went to there was a SmackDown before Mania, right? Mm-hmm. It was so bad, but the two hundred five, like two hundred five live, it was just like pure wrestling. So it's like after yeah. two hours of video packages and AJ Styles yeah. not wrestling, you know, it was it was like such a good live you, show. That's you know? the hard part, though. Is like yeah. the, 
most fans are conditioned to want to see entrances and video packages now. So it's like, are they bored when two at five live starts? I don't know. Though I, Marcus Mann, who is a great manager and a uh, smart booker kind of guy from around here, he, lo- he loves Noam Dar because he thinks he's Liam Gallagher from Oasis. Because he does like, he's like, he does a lot of Liam Gallagher uh, uh, moves and stuff. And if you know anything about Oasis, those, two, those brothers are the greatest heels ever. Like they have healed on each other. Like so, if anybody's going to take their wrestling, their personality from them, it's the right personality to take. Mm-hmm. Um. So, so there's some other big news this week from other uh, shows that maybe not a lot of people watch. Definitely not Mad Mike. This one. Uh, but it, it's also important because a friend of the show was involved in this uh, kind of big moment. Uh, if you haven't heard, apparently the Ring of Honor uh, Championship belt is no more. Of sorts. Wait, what? Uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, supposedly it is, uh, it's not, and there were some comments about he may still keep it around when he wants to or something like that. But they unveiled, and here's, uh, here's, uh, our, our friend Nick Lendl from, uh, IWC announcing, uh, apparently being proposed to by Cody uh, uh, of some sort. Uh, but, uh, yeah. It's like a reverse proposal. Yes, yeah, a reverse proposal. Uh, congratulations, Nick. Uh, so Cody Rhodes uh, had him unveil the the new Ring of Honor or the Ring of Honor, basically. And the new Code of Honor is that you have to kiss the ring of the champion. And our friend Nick was the first one to kiss the ring. Wow. Yeah, friend of the show. So they have a Super Bowl uh, ring instead of a belt. Yeah, yeah, basically, um, yes. Like a class That's- ring, really, but... <laughs> it's a big I was gonna ring. say I've I've been watching a, a lot. Look of at mid- the size of this thing on the video. It is huge. It's like bigger I'll, than Hall of Fame rings. I'll tell you what it reminds me of, Sword. I've been watching a lot of mid nineties WCW pay per views, right? Okay. And oh no, <laughs> Battle oh, Royale. No. The opening the opening match, like Diamond Dallas Page was in like the opening oh, match yeah. of every pay per view for two years. Oh yeah, and he had the ba- <laughs> the Battle Bowl ring. Yep. And uh, I, f- I forget how that ended. Like he pawned oh, it he, off. He had to pawn it when he wa- when Kimberly left him. Yeah. And, <laughs> so are we seeing when he feuded with the Booty Man? I know way too much about WCW. <laughs> yeah. <and that>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are, have we seen the return oh. of the WCW? I forget what what where it originally was. You're it, like, saying Starkey? somebody's going to get banged. Yeah. We're, we're, we're <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. If you don't know any, if you didn't watch '90s WCW, like. What? Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. I, he's just keeping that ring till Minoru Suzuki slaps him as hard as he can across the face. John on the chat said that all the champs are getting a ring, like tag team. Oh, really? This is just a that general is, I ring. Of- that's that's, that's really I, I had heard as well. They were getting their their yeah. belts like, are not going to be and prominent. Like and it's wow. going to be rings. Everybody gets Budget rings. Goes. So it's here, different. Here, okay, I, I give them a lot of credit for doing something different and trying to you know stick out, but. In my <laughs> okay, it's stupid because I, I feel like when you walk out, like the belt is prominent, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's just like, bam, that's the champion. He's wearing this giant gold belt, yeah. And now he's wearing a giant ring. I mean, I'm sure they're, we're going to get a lot of gestures or whatever, but still, it's just it doesn't now, like if all the champions get together. Does Captain Planet show? Up? I oh, I, I, I'm thinking more Green Lantern pour. Maybe. What wrestler can it. they? Yeah, can they? It takes out a finish though, because no longer can you throw the ring. You were going to throw the ring in the ring, and the guy puts it on his hand behind the ref's back. <laughs> yeah, like, it just turns into no, like a nuts. brass yeah. knuckle. Yeah. Yeah. Is Cody going to be forced to wear a glove over it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If it all just, of them get together, that's how they summon Roderick Strong back to Ring of Honor, right? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Was it Mid South? That's how the, yeah, past past champions. Uh, CM Punk. <laughs> Form up. <laughs> yeah. Brian yeah. Brian Danielson. <laughs> they, well, it's like Mid South before it was UWF used to have a uh, their TV belt was a was a medal that you wore around your neck, and I always thought that was weird. And then uh, I can't remember who threw it in the in the river. Like during an angle, and it was like a big part of the angle. They, and then they had to get a belt because they lost the one in the river. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, this is like uh, '85, so you know. Maybe I think was that on Hidden Gems recently on the network? It probably was. Yeah. I feel like I just saw that. Yeah. When I was watching, and I, I have friends like if my friend Chris in Chicago is watching, he's so angry right now that I can't remember who did it. Because <laughs> so, I, I saw that right next to me watching the old match of Christopher Daniels and uh, and uh, Samoa Joe back when they had. Hair or different hair? Oh yeah, in UWF, <laughs> it was it was it was really interesting. I watched UWF every week since twenty. Like you guys were talking about how much wrestling is on TV now. 
when I was when the big boom happened in the eighties, twenty two mm-hmm. had wrestling on every single night of the week at ten o'clock. There was a different promotion, and like Wednesday night was, uh, I believe Wednesday night was UWF, and then Thursday was Pro Wrestling This Week with Gordon Sully and uh, Joe Pettacino, and it was like every promotion. And it's like, by, I remember my mom sitting my brother and I down once. I go, you boys realize you watch about 24 to 25 hours of wrestling a week. Like you have to stop. I'm like, no. <laughs> and it turns out, I can't quit. it least turns out watching drugs. Yeah. like your brother. Yeah. They were just, ju- you guys were just preparing yourself for the year 2017. Yeah. When you literally could watch 24 hours in 24 hours. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I could have got a girlfriend, but I need to know more about laser trauma. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I can tell you a lot about Lasertron and uh, Boogie Woogie Man. I mean that that kind of oh, to have that kind of got to do it. Man. Somebody uh, had somebody had the shoulder to responsibility to do this. And it, yeah, and it's like like I remember I was watching a Starcade and I'm like, yeah, every match ends in DQ. Like, how do you remember all these finishes? Like, I used to have a notebook when I was a kid. This is how you know you graduated from Mark to Supermark to he's probably going to get in wrestling. I like, had a notebook and I wrote every finish in, and then I would book those finishes for my action figures later and I, I did, figure out how to tell their finishes i did the same did thing. you <laughs> i did the same thing i read the wrestlemania tapes and everything and yeah. i wrote down in all the weird world tours and everything and what the matches were and who won at least not finishers or anything yeah. like that but and it was like a, so it was, a, it was it was my version of wwe universe in a video game yeah uh, so you know and you built the pay-per-views and everything like that so yeah i, I only like as far as keeping track of that, like I used to be big with that with the Rumble, you know, for oh, like, who, well, not, who eliminated who, you know, because well, I got to know when Hercules, you know, <laughs> the Rumble. That's why everybody loves the Rumble in my family because yeah. it is my friends too. Like where we bet and it's ten bucks a number, oh, so yeah. you're playing for about three hundred dollars. You'll never love wrestling more than when you have <laughs> the opportunity, and like, that's when you also never hate wrestling more because we've had people like literally like they got both Bushwhackers. Dino Bravo, yeah. and it was like I spent thirty dollars on both Bushwhackers and Dino yeah. Bravo. Like, yeah, wrestling sucks. Enjoy it. <laughs> it's like every comedy wrestler out there. Too. Yeah, it's just it's like, oh my god, Santino Morella, and like it's great when it's somebody that has never watched wrestling and just wants to enjoy the fun of it. Yeah, and then you just rib them, and they don't even know. Like, oh my god, that dude is amazing. That's the magic number. Yeah. Three. Ten, ten bucks. Yeah. More people Drew with three. Carey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or it's like, yeah, the, the excitement just dies when it's like, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, Santino Morella set a record for being in there the shortest, you know. Well, do you get who, if you have the person that's thrown the shortest, you get your money back. It's a side bet. Oh. There's a lot of side bets. <laughs> and there's always a, a celebrity one. If you pick the celebrity, Drew Carey's always my pick. <laughs> yeah. Every, every year for the Rumble, when I, uh, when, either I host or one of my buddies host it, I always put out a list of one to 30 mm-hmm. and we guess every single entry. Oh, that's a good way oh, of doing wow. it too. And, and remember, yeah, it, it's, it's really fun. But like once you get about to 13 or 14, usually half of us are out. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what, what happened in, I want to say it was 2011, 2012 when they decided like that day it was going to be like 40 people. Oh, it was just everybody redoes the bets. Yeah. And we had a lot of people like, betting via <laughs> PayPal and stuff. It was it was a bad scene. There was a lot of phone calls. Like it was like down to the wire. Like the stock market. Yeah, down to the wire <laughs> betting. And there's also a ton of the prop bet sheet is ridiculous. How many prop bet? There's like forty prop bets. There's bets at Mania. My brother and I will bet on like if we were sitting here, we would bet on how many people would walk past. It's nonstop yeah. betting. And there's gotta be a bet on the intervals too. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like if are they gonna shave time? That's one of the, pr- yeah, the yeah. prop ones, yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's always who has the best elimination, which is the Taka Michinoku memorial award. Yeah. Like, like, Taka did that one <laughs> the, flip, the like, face exploder. Have you ever been <laughs> how many, been, how many um, people being there? What's that, Mike? Have you ever had a prop bet on how Kofi will escape elimination? Yes. Yeah. That it, it will Kofi do is a yes or no. Cool move, Kofi. It's called Kofi. They, they, we call him Kofi Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my brother thought his name was. They, they <laughs> need to have since there are like six pay per views before Royal Rumble and Mania now. Yeah, they they've got to let him win. Yeah, like having some of some, some crazy shit next year and just yeah. let him win it. Oh, the other great thing is my the year uh, B- like I think Batista won one. My brother does not know the difference between Batista and Randy Orton, which is. Ignorantly amusing <laughs> to me because he's been watching wrestling forever. Like he it's can tell tattoo. you it's the a tattoos, lot of, isn't it? Huh? It's the tattoos. Yeah, there's evolution. Yeah, and they were an evolution, <laughs> and like they're, the, they're practically the same. Person. All right. They, yeah. Uh, by the way, we got to bring it back around. Matt Tressler is calling out. He says that uh, Dick Slater threw the medal in the river. Oh, thank you so much. Of course, Matt would know. 
Of course. Yeah. All right. Uh, Thank you for doing do that. The, Dick do Slater the ROH. also in the 1997 Royal Rumble. Also killed. Yeah. A, also tried to kill a woman with a knife and said, "You're going to bleed, bitch." While he stabbed her, and now he's in jail. <laughs> That's now in the court know. testimony. <laughs> Do, do the uh, ROH Tag Team Champions get varsity jackets? Ooh. And then the longer Again, they have them, they get letters. we don't want to bring back like, Kevin Sullivan. They get gold jackets, like the PGA. <laughs> if, they, if they keep defending it, they get yeah. the, the letter pins. They should get a sash. <laughs> you know? And each time they get to add a pin to it, where yeah, they build like, up. Right, like almost like a Boy Scout thing. A, a pay-per-view <laughs> pin. Yeah. yeah. So like, I defended makes, it there's at, your bonus. There's like your if bonus. If it was WWE, I, defended, I got this No Mercy metal. pin. I defended it at No Mercy. It's like a, they get like a passport book with different stamps. stamps. With different stamps. Like, yeah. <laughs> that would fit Ring of Honor, too. It, anything like really confusing that I don't understand, and when I watch the show for five minutes, I'm like, what? And, yeah, like, and, and the, the number of stamps requires, you know, how certain aspects you you, know, you don't have to wrestle that show if you have five stamps or something. Mm-hmm. I call Ring of Honor something like TNA would do, but they do it in reverse. I like, call Ring of yeah. Honor when when good horror movies aren't on Comet. That's what I call Ring of Honor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, you could watch Doctor Fives or an hour of badly lit wrestling. <laughs> Anyways, um, uh, this is great. We got so much more to talk about. We got the big question, and we'll touch base on the one, the latest in the the insane story of uh, what's happening with Sexy Star, or is it a story? We'll find out. We'll determine that after the break here. But first, give a shout out to our friend Slice on Broadway, right up the road. SliceOnBroadway dot com. Uh, supporting this show, uh, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, right here in Beachview. As well as Main Street down in Carnegie, PA, PNC Park. Uh, let them know that you heard about them on the Mayhem Show, PGH underscore slice on the Twitter. We'll be right back with the big question Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, we are back, Wrestling Mayhem Show. It is about time for the big question, but first, there's something really important we have to do. Larry, you had an uh, opinion that you expressed here on the break. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You had <laughs> you that? had a very very explicit opinion that that you you expressed about what about Tony Storm? Oh, her hat's stupid. Her hat's stupid. <laughs> yeah. All right. You know, since you have a judgment about silly hats on Mae Young, uh, we we we've been talking about doing this for a little bit, and we finally did. And uh, so we have a little something special if uh, <laughs> for you, Larry, I'm that you need to that wear thing. now. Uh, don't worry. <laughs> it's just been under this desk the entire time. Oh, wow. Look at the rat tail there. So we have uh, Enzo's hair, uh, which is really appropriate since you're our 2L5 live person, <laughs> that uh, you should be the first one to wear this. You got a better chance of Chad kissing the owl. <laughs> 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 that fucking owl. Only for a couple of days. Roman Re- <laughs> Actually, Roman Reigns has been, been wearing this. Uh, behind you over there. So, uh, Larry, uh, you have been nominated the first Enzo Amori <laughs> Award of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. So Is that your guy's title belt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Title belt. <laughs> yeah. Look at that rat tail. It's like one of those belts <laughs> you want to lose. <laughs> it's That's... a parade. I kind of like him being on 205 Live, though, because it's somebody that like the crowd reacts to, and yeah, maybe his matches aren't. Well, somebody new to boot. Is good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And it gives him. So, I mean, yeah, it's like maybe you can actually see this him so wrestle small. now instead of just get wailed on. Yeah, this is and for a child. You gotta put it on your head. I don't think it'll fit. It's. You, I don't even try. I mean, it doesn't have to fit right. You gotta put. You gotta take your headphones off. Enzo's actual take, hair doesn't fit. You right, put it on. So. Yeah, that's true. You gotta take. You put it on, you and then you put like, like the headphones over it. Maybe this is amazing for you guys on audio. I know. Um, so. So, so, so Sorg, if I ever get nominated for the Enzo Award, should I just grab my Scotty Two Hottie lid? Uh, you're what? You I have was a just thinking that. You have a Scotty Two Hottie? <laughs> he is yeah. like the Scotty Two Hottie of today. Yeah. He perfect. Is, right? Oh, oh perfect. look at this! Don't, look at that! Don't, don't do that to Scotty. Yeah. Yeah, Scotty could actually was actually Scott. really good. He better than that. He was. Yeah. He was really good last week. I was gonna say Scott Taylor is a much better yeah. worker yeah. Night, of, night of the Superstar. Look at that! Hold on, we gotta get a picture with you. Missy's gonna take a picture of you over there. So, uh, hold on. I, I, I think whoever dons the Enzo wig should have to do a boomerang doing the Enzo dance. Someone sent, <laughs> sent me a video of them all doing the dance with uh, the, the Dorada doing back it. And forth thing that he and does. It was, yeah, and it was just painful to watch. The boomerang dance. Yeah. Her hat is a national treasure. Take that back, says Bobby. <laughs> you know, no, what nation? it kind of looks like it, it's really your hair. 
<laughs> it, it actually looks it looks believable. Yeah, it's like if you walk down the street with that thing, surprise yeah. one yeah. people will laugh at you. But two, did you just wake up? That's what like. <laughs> I don't think I'd get laughed at in the street. Lee Moore already says I guess that say it's about quarter like after it. 11. This is probably the best time for him to walk down to the street <laughs> where no one, no one will see it. Oh, man. It's going to be great. Oh, That's... and the, na- the answer is the nation is Australia. Oh, okay. Mm. So there you go. Wow. This... I think it's, the nation is domination. <laughs> <laughs> no, one time we don't make a nation a domination oh. joke. I make Look. nation domination jokes all the time to people that don't know about it. And yeah. that and that's why and that's why you... <laughs> certified so, so certified G. Over it's there. what happens all like the time. I like I said, that hat is stupid. <laughs> isn't it horrible? Like when you're around wrestling people and people say something and you just feel this urge to say a wrestling thing. Yeah. Like yeah. someone will be. We had an argument at work once, and someone's like, "You know, enough is enough." And I'm like, "It's time for a change." <laughs> it's, it's like, it's, it's like nobody. It's like there will be a situation where this works. One yeah, day. and yeah. they're like screaming, "Enough is enough! Enough!" And I'm like, "It's time for a change! It's time for a change!" And I couldn't say it. All right, the big question for this week: We kind of free game this a little bit on, you know, uh, sexy star. We 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 chatted about how how you know her incident with Rosemary last week, uh, apparently intentionally injuring somebody in the ring. And, and and of course, Lucha Underground's in the can, and but but I mean it's pre-edited, and they do a lot of really interesting stuff. We talk about you know they kill people off on a regular basis, right? So the question this week, I think you know our friends over there, Krista Joseph and 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 the, and the crew over there, could definitely, if they decided to capitalize on what's happening right now, can get a little creative in editing and kill off Sexy Star. Um, so the big question is, if you were, uh, 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 on that team with Lucha Underground, how would you kill Sexy Star off the show? Okay. Hmm. I, I, I said it earlier that Cage, Cage should put her in an armbar and rip her arm off. And you can't teach that. And you can't teach that. <laughs> <laughs> you need to throw that line in now as part of this. <laughs> I would have Pen- Pentagon do the old uh, Johnny Cage finish. No, uh, the finish where what's his name turns into the dragon. Liu Kang turns into the dragon from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> it just bites it, her. Yeah, it just or like an <laughs> animality. Bites her arm off. Yeah. So anything, anything involving Pentagon Jr. I'm, I'm cool. With. There you go. What about what about you, Rob? I I go with the you know it's in the can right it's finished. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'd I'd go in with the uh, the Simpsons Poochie ending. With the, you know, I must now return to my home planet, you know, <laughs> as oh, she's good. lifted up and out. And then you get the little the blurb saying, you know, she was, you know, her ship was destroyed, whatever. And <laughs> I'm five foot ten and that can be taught in in, in uh, every junior college across the. Uh, no, 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 no. I said he needed to say it. Not well, yeah. you. <laughs> Are you just feeling the Enzo? I'm, I'm pretty sure. You're yeah, feeling... I'm feeling the, the Enzo thing, but I'm pretty sure you can you can learn <laughs> being. Oh, God, No. <laughs> He's wearing it on top of his hat. You know, if somebody Swole. else could please win, he looks like he works at a win this from me. <laughs> <laughs> Between the headset and the hat, the hat on the back, <laughs> it goes off. Man, Mike, you have to have something. Oh God, there are so many ways I could think of. Um, the first to, to give no credit at all would be like in a uh, between seasons three and four comic book, which they've done before too. Mm-hmm. I still need um, to read that. Yeah, you do. You really do, Sorg. Uh, um, but you know what? All right, here, here's we're we're probably going to get some cor- some sort of kill shot versus um, 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 Ar Fox Dante Fox match. Ooh, there you go at Ultima Lucha. That's what I'm assuming anyway, because that, that feud is not over. So I'm assuming whoever loses that match stands on top of the Lucha Underground billboard <laughs> with a sniper rifle, mm. <laughs> and. and Basically, they're aiming for the other person that, that just beat them in the match. And and Sexy Star pushes her way out of the exit, lastly pushing aside Taya in order to step right into the shot, and that person shoots Sexy Star in the head. Wow, that was, that was intricate. That was elaborate. That wow, was intricate. Well, because I, I, I feel like Taya needs to be involved somehow, too, because... Ty kind of got screwed over by Sexy Star as well, and that, that is true. Um, unless, okay. unless they're gonna bring in Rosemary, mm-hmm. you know, I, I feel like there's some sort of irony there, which could be great. We got some from the chat room. Uh, John out there in the chat says, "Throw her through Dario's roof ceiling of his office." 
Uh, Bobby no, says people, people have lived from that. That is true. That is true. <laughs> yeah. She's the one that lands on the bull, though. Um, it's Bobby of J Town says grave con. <laughs> okay, grave consequences with Mil Martez, who has newer pants, and she loses and comes back as Mil Martez with new pants, but she's a different person playing sexy star, sexy but, star Mil Martez. Yeah, they could just bring her back as a different person next year, which would be the best. Thing probably where there's like a new sexy yeah. star. I just get uh, what's his name's wife. Take uh, the mask off. Uh, 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 something I kind of wanted to say. I, I haven't watched a lot of new. You know, I'm kind of going through the backlog on Netflix. Mm. But one thing I like about Lucha Underground is that it's pretty much. But I mean, before it even airs, right? It's all in the can. Yeah. It's done. So it's not influenced by. You know, like say, sexy star was in WWE, and all of a sudden she was in the shit house, and it'd be like overnight. Mm-hmm. You know, just she just starts, you know, whatever they're going to do to her um, to where it's like, OK, now you're watching it. It might make sense. But if you're rewatching it years later or something, it'd be like, what the hell was I think she's going still going to get booked everywhere, though. Yeah, that's what I love about wrestling is yeah. like people forget in six months. And mm-hmm. I mean, uh, you know, it, ha- it happened in Japan. Kira May had kicked uh, Ricky Choshu in the face, broke all the bones in his face. Jeez. And uh, he like was out of wrestling for nine months. And made a head shows like six weeks later in Tokyo and sold out in 20 minutes, sold out the first UWF show in 20 minutes. And people are like, he's the real deal. Yeah, because he just shoot kicked the guy in the face. So, that, I mean, that adds a little bit to it, you know, because, yeah. I mean, especially that whole like kind of late 90s, you know, is it real, isn't it, you know, kind of kind of vibe to it. But- yeah, I kind of there's so much of it, like it feels kind of bs to me a little bit. So here's where the bs thing, I think, comes because TNA has uh, put some videos out. I'm waiting for the mic groans. Um, where they, it, there's they, they apparently there's going to be footage. I know a friend of the show, DJ Z. Um, burr, 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 burr. Thank you. Uh, his match will be uh, from Triple Mania. Will be, be part of the show. So it sounds like they're just kind of doing a Triple Mania compilation show, mm-hmm. which intrigues me that they're doing that kind of stuff with the Impact GFW thing. Uh, but uh, other than that, um, they're doing this whole like, and they do some really quick sound bites of like Jeff Jarrett and, and Jerry being Borash. Like it was crazy backstage, like kind of comments. Right. Yeah. And so they're going to have the whole <clears throat> reaction and backstage to everything that happened, which turns us into what Rob, uh, I was going to say, I'm just getting what, what you're talking about. Just kind of plugging that stuff in. I'm thinking like Raymond Burr and Godzilla. Oh, when <laughs> he's just not even really in the movie, and he's yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> we're just gonna yeah that match is reacting pretty... to things that aren't yeah. Have, have, have... DJ Z's match is pretty crazy from uh, tri- Triple Mania because uh, Aerostar did a dive out of the lighting rig, and the lighting rig is about thirty five feet above the ring. Jeez. So like, if you we see when he did it, like you know when someone falls really far and their body picks up speed, like not just a dive, but like they start to gravity starts to push them hard. Terminal That's what happens. Speed. It's the craziest dive I've seen in a while. Is it like that guy that missed the table that's been going? It's, high, it's like twice as high as that. <laughs> oh, like they just keep raising, but it's one of those dives where like I love when people are like, "Well, there's nine guys to catch me, so I can't die." You know, when, when Aerostar does dives like that, I'm yeah. less and less impressed because I'm realize he's a time traveler and he's already seen he's gonna be okay. It, the one that scares me is the one where he just goes backwards <laughs> and just throws his head backwards. Like, I don't trust anybody in wrestling that oh, much. Oh, when he just kind of trust falls out yeah. there? Yeah. He's yeah. been doing those for a long time, too. <laughs> That's why he has a mask, because there's probably like, like it's like the movie The Prestige. There's just like a bunch of tubes <laughs> with all like, with like old, uh, with old, yeah. dead, old dead ones. Like, yeah. Doink the Clowns? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Which he's, one's in the box? He's the Dread Pirate Arrow Star? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he's the Ultimate Warrior. That was the other big room. <laughs> but smaller and does stuff. I have nothing to follow that up. <laughs> this is Nikola Tesla in this. Uh, oh, uh, by, by, by the way, Sorg, you brought up Jeff Jarrett. Um, Did I? There was a, there was yeah. a funny story that, that kind of just dropped about him. Oh, no. What now? He's... He is independently leaving GFW for a little while. What? Yeah. <laughs> for personal reasons. He, he just gets, got there. He's stepping I down. Know. He's not the new this is why no this is why I'm not investing any time in that product. Well, Meltzer said he was like in no condition to work at Triple Mania. Like he's, he he like, didn't look good. He said he mentioned like the way he mentioned it was weird. Like the old Meltzer way of saying stuff was personal problems, mm-hmm. and that meant somebody's messed up on something. But he was like in no condition. There was some controversy about his condition. And then he never. It was he, he's the worst editor ever. So he never follows up on it. Right. Something's going on, but yeah, I didn't see his match. Well, that, that was uh, when I when I heard because they were they were uh, putting Triple Mania out on Twitch for lot for like for free. Yeah, 
And I found out about that, pulled it up. What, what, what else was happening that night? Like, was oh, the same night as the fight. The big oh, fight. that's right. I was pulling yeah. it up while we were watching the fight or waiting for the fight to happen. And it was when like Jeff Jarrett was coming out. And yeah. he was handing things to people in the crowd. I don't know if they're please. Please watch GFW. He <laughs> forgot what country he was in. Um, Were they, was, I like am a deaf mute. If you give me a dollar for this, it will help me. But he took forever. Like I went and did something else, came yeah. back to the stream, and he was still entering the ring. And it was that multi man I battle royal. I don't know what it yeah. was, and and he just he did not look great in there. It was just weird because like as part of the GFW thing when he was traveling, like all of a sudden he was in Bullet Club. And he was like doing all, and it was just like, and he's selling Bull Club uh, shirts oh. for the next two years. <laughs> yeah, he built yeah. that. Yeah, we saw that yeah. like tw- two shows in a row. Yeah, we, so. we we like yeah we saw that like me- like Meadville this year. Like, dude, wasn't that like two years ago? What are you doing? With these yeah, years? it was like Meadville last year, and then the Global Force show in in. Uh, oh, I forgot Keysport. they did a Global Force show. Yeah, yeah, and it was so weird because it didn't even draw as much as a regular RWA show. No, or okay, regular RWA show we'll say. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it, it didn't. It didn't. Uh, it, it was and it was at the Palisades. It was the first time there was wrestling at Palisades since like I think they said like decades. Like, like, no, we did no, shows no, no, a decade because like I remember Super Indie. Yeah, we did Super oh, Indie because yeah. I remember uh, yeah. so when Sweeney won. Yeah, mm-hmm. I took a dragon screw off the apron, which is the dumbest bump to ever take. Because I was like, well, I can't do all these high spots, but I could fall really funny. So I took that. <laughs> I coughed up a piece of white stuff. I don't know what it was. Like it was like a chunk, Long like about tissue. this big. And then so I was wrestling Troy Lords, and I said, hey, can you just give me? a minute because i think I'm, i might be dying because i coughed up something from inside my body and j-rock was managing him and, I, and he said j-rock he goes hey give doe a second like get some heat so he took off his shirt and posed and then suplexed me on the floor <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and i was like well i better get back in the ring so i don't die he didn't specify why you needed the time <laughs> yeah so i was like I, I mean thank you i mean it took some time up i mean he did exactly what i asked him to do so you can't be mad Maybe it knocked whatever piece of my body had fallen out of place. It put it back yeah, in. Yeah, it reset everything. Uh, John saying yeah. that when he when uh, Jared was in Meadville, he thought he reeked of alcohol, but he could be wrong. So, yeah. um, I don't remember. Or like, he didn't seem like he was rough out there. It's but. just it's just weird that he's on Triple Mania. I don't know. It's I'm just glad Doctor Wagner made a shitload of money two hundred fifty five two hundred fifty five thousand dollars for his mask which is but when you think about it other than la park and atlantis and santo who will never lose his mask like that mask is like he was willing to lose it for like 40 41,000 between 19 and 41,000 a couple years ago i'm so glad he held on and then he took his mask off and he looks like evil jesus he looks even more awesome without his mask this, this is this is this the same dr wagner that was in lucha underground yeah okay dr wagner jr yeah yeah he's the brother of silver king uh they look I remember silver king from old wcw yeah Boys, right yeah. yeah they're brothers yeah they had another brother they have a cousin el texano that was in old wcw too but yeah he so they now he's going to be ray wagner king wagner and then uh his son's going to be dr wagner just dr wagner but he comes from a whole family. Like, there's another one before him. A family of doctors. Yeah, and he comes out the Bad Medicine, <laughs> which is the greatest music ever for an evil doctor. Like, I had someone bitch, like, why does he come out the Bon Jovi? I'm like, it's fucking Bad Medicine. Like, if you can't enjoy that for what wrestling should be, then an evil doctor comes. The only better evil doctor was a guy who died a couple years ago, Dr. Cerebro in Mexico. And he literally had a brain on his mask. He had, like, a doctor's outfit that he came out with, and he had a giant br- neon pink brain on the back of his mask. It was the greatest. Sweet. Yeah. Plus Bon Jovi, uh, Bad Medicine is a, l- a little less obvious than Dr. Feelgood by Motley Crue. So that's. Yeah. That's and, th- that well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's completely questions uh, this entire time about WWE uh, that we have not touched on. <laughs> <laughs> I, we just watched SmackDown. We did watch. We did just watch SmackDown. We saw Shane O'Mac has been suspended, uh, which is you know completely frees him up to be a wrestler. Uh, so there's that. <laughs> so what Kevin Owens may get hurt from his sloppy offense, and uh, oh. I, I, I can't stand Shane McMahon as a wrestler because it's like he those guys get to do stuff that no full time guy gets to do. Mm. They don't have to learn how to wrestle. They get to use every shortcut and smoke and mirror in the world. Like, you know, chairs, like they could do other people's moves. And it's like, yeah, that's cool. And the same thing's going to happen in Mania with Stephanie. I know I already said it, but it's like, it's just annoying. Mm-hmm. I it, liked when Shane would get in there, though, with guys like Blackman and that back then. Oh, yeah. You know, with that kind of, hey, that's cool. But yeah. then when you put him in there with like Undertaker, or AJ Styles, it's, it's, you know, you talk about suspension of disbelief, you know? 
that's a uh, it's it's he i love steve Blackman so much too. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. one of those guys i just irrationally <laughs> love um what was he he's doing bail bonds and anvil pa now isn't yeah he? I, I just saw a commercial to, for that you know his old music like that dong, but, <laughs> yeah we used to made up words for it it was just lethal weapon steve blackman repeated over and over again so everybody would just scream it at the top of their legs when he would come out He's another one of those guys in the old Fed games. Like, you know, when you would play the yeah. Royal Rumble and you'd see a guy just truck into the ring and you'd see him come out shuffling. I'm like, yeah. yes. I, I think I used to use his music old for like attitude. every creator wrestler. Attitude. Attitude. Yeah. It's great yeah, creator attitude. wrestling. Yeah. What happened on, I didn't watch Raw. What happened on Raw? My buddy's dad looks just like Steve Blackman. Because <laughs> oh. we used to watch wrestling at his house. And when Steve Blackman come out, he'd walk by and he'd be like, oh, hey, that's my brother. <laughs> that's not your brother. He goes, yeah, look at us. We look exactly the same. I have a friend who's, uh, you know. Farn- he would joke about it all the time. And he did. He looked real close to You guys know Farnsworth mm-hmm. that announces yeah. sometimes. That he's here. His dad looks exactly like Harley Race. <laughs> <laughs> so any time Harley Race is on a show, we're like, hey, your dad. And he's like, yeah, I know. But his dad is like a horse whisperer, which is even funnier. <laughs> Harley Race Harley- is probably weird. Harley oh. race, race as like a gravelly a secrets of horse whispering. Yeah, a gravelly voiced horse whisperer. Just oh, I say Harley race stuff all the time because like and it, the dumbest reasons. But like when he came out to manage Lex in the match against Wyndham, where the again horrible era of WCW, where Flair left and took the belt to uh, WWE, um, and he's like, now is the time. Like no one had any idea what that meant. <laughs> <laughs> Do the pile driver like he was a heel doing a pile driver? No, that's a regular move, but. I love the the gravelly voiced Harley Race. Punk told me once that he uh, Harley Race threw up all over the side of his car, and I was like, "Well, being straight edge does that piss you off?" He goes, "Well, no, it's Harley Race, so that's fine." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, "Okay, I guess you have a, like a sliding scale of, of how much things." If it was me, you know, if I had been high and thrown up all over the side of his car, I would have been an asshole. <laughs> but you know, I'm not saying I'm Harley Race anyway. <laughs> And the moral of the story is we're not Harley Race. No, no. Or is. or a horse whisperer. No. no. Um, or a horse man whisperer. For horse man whisperer. <laughs> for horse, for <laughs> horse, horse man whispers. Idol. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, I don't know. Uh, we we talked about Raw last night, uh, apparently, Mike. Um, I don't know. Is there anything of note to talk about here on the main show? Um, I mean, we could talk about our, what is going on with Carmella and James Ellsworth. They, they wrong up. show, but okay. Honestly, we we thought well, raw. There there was one thing that happened, and, yeah, and yeah. it was it was big show getting thrown places. Is this? Well, I guess is 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 this is this the thing that uh, uh, sets up for a big cast when he gets back from his injury? That's a pretty long setup. You, you think? Yeah. You, you, I guess we need some time, right? Story. I don't any... think they have eight weeks planned, uh, let alone eight months I, planned for. That's true. I think they're doing budget cuts, and Ellsworth is getting the axe. <laughs> Were, was there any reason that it was a cage match, or did they just decide it was a cage match for last night? Yeah, uh, <laughs> there was no reason. There was no real reason. The big show, the big show, Braun. It wasn't there a point where Braun well, says, "I don't know why I have this match." Yeah, like he yep. said that in. in he was in, like, in "Why?" Yeah, like, I don't know why I'm in a cage match. It's just like Brock Lesnar's at home, but. Whatever. It just ruins cage matches. Like cage matches when I I feel old, but go with me on this. Like, when I was young, it was like, like people had a cage match. Like yeah, this is it. Like not hey, this is the second or third time we work. Let's get in the cage. It was a reinforced steel cage. Yeah. Double yeah. reinforced. Double, super triple well, reinforced. A four thousand pound what? ring. Because oh, remember when they when they remember when they had him fight a few months ago and they stressed and this was like after show had lost a lot of weight too. Yeah. And they were like, oh my god, we got to reinforce the shit out of this thing. Like they hadn't <laughs> yeah. just had a six man tag or something. And big shows yeah. in. They're like, what the <laughs> fuck, guys? Yeah. Like, come on, I cut yeah. like a lot of weight. Look at look, I kind of have abs now. Where like yeah. in the last segment, there'd been more weight in that ring. Yeah, yeah. He, hey, they've made they probably made him shave too. Yeah. He got depressed and just shaved <laughs> it off, trying to make himself lighter. <laughs> they, 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 they were interviewing the referee that was in the collapsed ring match. Oh, that they yeah. did. And and I like I'm like I, I I watched that interview and I'm watching this match and we're sitting here and I'm just like that ref's gonna get it somehow, isn't he? Like 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 it's gonna be like um oh who was the one that Tim White that, Tim White. Yeah, what did, like Tim oh, White before had, he killed himself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when he tried to suicide himself because he got knocked he off got in hell in a cell. In hell in a cell. Yeah, yeah. And, and he got depressed. And that WWE was so dark then. <laughs> I know. See what I mean? It's like, hey, Tim White's going to keep trying to kill himself, and he can't, and he's yeah. a failure at suicide <laughs> for weeks. <laughs> yeah, weeks. that was in that weird <laughs> post attitude, but before guys started dying. Yeah, it was like. <laughs> 
Like after Chris Benoit wiped his family out there, like you know, we should really settle down maybe a little bit. The worst part about that Tim White stuff was he had to he had to talk to Josh Matthews for several weeks. That's the real reason. That's the real (laughs) reason. That's just that's that that's probably the real reason Tim White was. That was that was again Tim White being ahead of the curve of letting us know how we were going to feel watching Impact now Mm -hmm. with Josh Matthews. That that's why I'm not watching Impact anymore because I choose life. Is Tim White (laughs) Aerostars Nikola Tesla? I don't know. <laughs> we were about. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Oh, I was thinking, should a rock star be his Nikola Tesla? Because yeah. David Bowie played him in the movie. Right, right, right. So I said, yes, Billy Corgan should be his Nikola Tesla. <laughs> I was going to say Nakamura. Nakamura. Oh, or Nakamura. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well said. All right. On that note, guys, I want to know what the hell you learned this week in wrestling. Who wants to go first? Sorg, Sorg. I'll, I'll, I'll go first. Go ahead, man, Mike. Um, I learned that the May Young Classic is very much like the NHL playoffs. As soon as you touch that trophy, you're fucked. <laughs> the NHL playoffs are like 11 months long, though. <laughs> We're getting all yeah, Young but as weeks. soon as someone touches the Stanley Cup, they go, they go Man, lose. It, wouldn't it be great it's if they jinxed. just pre-taped the NHL playoffs and just released it all in like two weeks? Let's say oh, I die. Just watch the ones you want. I die. Just watch the ones you want. Yeah, we can just I mean, skip that whole Capital Series. Yeah, exactly. I would die. I oh the my whole god! Thing now, uh, Sorg, hmm. Tina just put something in the chat room. If this is true, um, I'm gonna tell Brandon to stop watching Impact permanently. <laughs> Why? Tina just said. Speaking of Impact, the Pope just left, so now it's just Borash and Josh on commentary. Oh, man. <laughs> I've been telling you to stop watching oh, Impact. Oh, God. Uh, did anyone else feel that shiver up the small of their back? Or no, is that just me? I don't watch it. No. no. Oh, you I should. can sleep at night. I've yeah. been having other back pains. I don't know what's what. <laughs> can, you know what? I, I always <laughs> thought, like, can Impact get any worse? Remember that week that what's his, Orlando Jordan sprayed milk all over himself? Yeah. And yeah. I said, it can't get any worse than this. And somehow... They have they have fucking like, popped that week after just week. Just like James Cameron when we were in a bar. That's yeah. A <laughs> yeah. No, oh, yeah. No, nah, they can't lower this uh, bar anymore. I used to, we used to do a podcast, and I did. I was the only person who would watch Impact every week. And hey, I realized, like, what? That's Mike. I realized what a tremendous weight came off my soul when I stopped watching it. Like, literally, yep. like, it's like whenever you finally realize, like, that you're out of a bad relationship. And you're, <laughs> do you know what I mean? You're like, she was fucking all my friends. <laughs> Like, that's what it felt like. Wait, wait, wait. That was abusive. Wait, wait, Mike. That's exactly how you described it when you stopped watching. Yeah. (laughs) We need to do a podcast that did a former Impact Watcher support group. I'm 100% down with this. Because, like, the first couple weeks, you're like, I might be missing something. And you're like, no, I'm not missing anything. (laughs) Week one topic. Show me the ways in which Dixie Carr has negatively oh. impacted your life. The, the fact that I know that, like, <laughs> on, on an owl, do you get a book for the next, like, what, five months? <laughs> I, reviewed, I reviewed all the Dixie Carter shows where she was she was supposedly sleeping with AJ, and she brought out the girl who played Olive Oil at Islands of Adventure. Oh, Claire Lynch. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and they had the Claire baby doll, and the, ba- and the baby doll was AJ's child. And you know uh-huh. what? Like, I was like, they're. I can't believe that they have one of the best wrestlers in the world, and this is what I'm sitting through. Also, the era where they used to ice Ric Flair all the time. Remember how? Remember the excuse for that was that Dixie was playing a sub- a surprise birthday party for Surge. Oh yeah, I like also Surge, who sexually harassed more than half the female talent, and yet his name got to be one of the female names. Names uh, Salinas was named after him. I know way too much about TNA. God, I'm thinking oh, that, yeah, you know, we were talking about how, how much we're kind of tired of Shane. That whole AJ Shane thing doesn't seem so bad now. That, no. That I'm, that I'm remembering <laughs> you know what? Anytime, anytime people were like, all these the fans were like, they're burying AJ in WWE. I'm like, no. no. This is the best he's ever had it. <laughs> no. I have seen, yeah, I lived nah, through he's fortune. living, man. Yeah. He's living. <laughs> yeah. I have lived through some horrible times for young AJ Styles. He and, gets to travel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like he's got his <laughs> Game Boy Advance, he's fine. Just yeah. let him go. He's, he's, he's like I've he's lived. He's, he's, he's like I've I've survived worse than Ellsworth. You know, <laughs> my brother was so upset it's when good. AJ came in for AWC once. We took. He said someone said we'll, we'll take you out to eat. Where do you want to go? He goes, Oh, go to Arby's. My brother's like the world champion eats at Arby's, and to this day it's upset him <laughs> to, to no end. So every time he sees him, he goes, Oh, that's a dude, the fucking champ that eats at Arby's. That's what wrestling's come to. And I'm like, of all things to hate a human being for. At least Samoa Joe went to Haas's when he was here. <laughs> 
So he drew my brother drove. I feel some, like Sumatra so would be awesome. Yeah. It was when the one in makes sense. The one in Century Three was up and he's like, This place is great. And I'm like, it's fucking hospitality. It's the best. So then he said, Does anyone gonna drive me back to the airport? My brother's like, Yeah, I'll drive you. And my brother's a lot smaller than me. And he drives him out and they get there, my brother's like, So that'll be twenty bucks. And like Samoa Joe's a real intimidating dude. And he's like, Well, he goes, Yeah, well, you know, gas. And he made Samoa Joe pay him in the park. <laughs> it was insane. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? He's like, what's he going to do? Kick my ass? Put me in a coquina clutch? Fuck him. <laughs> he just ate horses. Yeah, he's like, I just got him horses. I paid for him. He had tender tips. What else did he get at horses? That's the only thing to get at horses. That was, that's, that's that the plug most is, Samoa Joe thing I've ever heard. Like, when I saw like, him roll in, I was all. like, yeah, when I saw him roll in, I'm like, the fucking champ is here. <laughs> I mean, where else? Would he, I don't see him going to uh, what's the other b- big buffet that's around here now? Golden Corral. Golden Corral. He's not a Golden Corral. No, it just makes sense. I never. It's something I didn't know. That yeah, I would, I, that I know. Like, but as a champ, I think you need to at least get a steak of some yeah. sort. If you're the world champ, you get a steak. You don't get good oh. mood food. You don't get horsey sauce. You get a steak. Steak. You if we go, weren't anything, we two for five. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's should be no drive-through where the world champ eats. No. It's you like know. only off the value menu, champ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can have anything you want <laughs> off the value menu. <laughs> yeah, bring me up that dollar menu. Champ Spurgeon tonight. I yeah. want I, 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 one of everything. I got $8. I, I, so, I just yeah. see like AJ Styles pulling up to the drive thru and then they got the sliders now. And it's like, oh, it's after 9 p.m. Give me six sliders. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just remembered it, 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 slider, when, when, yeah, when AJ came through for IWC, they did a show in Butler. So I can just like, I can only imagine where the hell they ended up. He <laughs> ate a bur- Burger Hut too. <laughs> What's that? Burger Hut too. Oh, yeah, that's right. They got, yeah. yeah. Burger Hut. Yeah. <laughs> There's a Burger Hut too. It's one of the few left. Yeah. yeah and, it's, oh, and it was dude. about two miles away from the, <laughs> yeah. the venue. So I know where wrestlers eat. Our <laughs> interview has turned into an interview Sorry. with Shirley Doe after this, too. That's so where know. have the world champs eaten when they've come to Pittsburgh? Um, <laughs> <laughs> what is eating it? around it's, the world. Has anybody learned anything from wrestling this week? I just I'm learned. Sorry. That, I'm sorry. That, so okay. Joe's a horses guy. Oh, this is like, great. <laughs> That's just what learned. I learned. There you go. I was going to say I learned that. Man, Braun Strowman just likes lifting things up. Yes, he does. <laughs> yeah. Until I find out what he's lifting on he his is fork. A strong, strong eat. man. Samoa Joe's got it. <laughs> yeah. Man. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, I mean, Braun. Braun, but, Braun, uh, Braun I, I did up. learn. I learned that. Damn, Braun is just like he picked up Big Show like nothing, mm-hmm. and not just picked him up like I'll pick you up in a power slam. Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> like, <laughs> come on. I mean, Lesnar and Cena can pick up Big Show and like you know the. In the, onto the shoulders, but he just yeah. like he just lifted him. It was like, like he was nah, a he's like, weight. and like Big Show's not really helping him too much. He's, I'm just gonna turn you around here. Oh, ready? Give me that head. We'll tuck this. <laughs> Wham! And then I'm gonna pick you up again. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, Braun! Stop it! Like, stop throwing chairs. Stop tipping ambulances. You're so a monster. Do you think the Big Show feels intimidated by strength like that at I this point? You, I, who wouldn't? This might be refreshing that dude is, to him. That dude's awesome. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Braun can he can have whatever he wants. Fall I'll off watch Cobo every Hall. week. He can survive anything. Yeah. I, I it, saw that dude fall off the roof of a building. Yeah. <laughs> and he came back. And and he won came the back. Title he sure like did that. a crazy yeah. elbow drop too. <laughs> Tell you what, if he would put Braun on every week and have him just do whatever, yeah. I don't care. I'll watch it. It's someone. Watch I saw it. a picture online today, and someone said, "Can you?" Be-? And it was a Braun and uh, and uh, who's the guy? The Wyatt family, Bray Wyatt. And it was like, can you believe that Braun Sherman's more over than Bray Wyatt a year from when this picture's taken? It's like, yeah, he actually is. It's it's amazing. Or they brought him into the group to get him over, and he didn't even need them. No, mm. it's just needed he was, he was just like, a goon in a group of goons. Here's a big guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. He was just guy. bigger than the other he big guy. He throws guys. off his chairs like lawn darts now. <laughs> awesome. It's amazing. Awesome. Uh, Larry, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Um Tiny hats are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Put it back on. Put it back on. He did just learn he's a certified G <laughs> <laughs> and a bona fide stud. There you go. You can't, you can't teach, teach that. that. You can't teach that. Uh, what about you, Rob? I, I don't know. From watching wrestling, I don't think I've really learned much <laughs> this week, but I'm learning a lot here today <laughs> in in the the studio. Yes, yeah, a very educational experience yeah. from the chat room. Um, I lost all of them because everybody started talking about Burger Hut too. Uh, Bobby, it's Alex, really good to be fair. <laughs> Alex, I earned the stomach. Alex, <laughs> Alex learned that burlesque shows 
or uh, that burlesque and wrestling go surprisingly together. Uh, again, another plug for his Occupy Pro Wrestling uh, they, podcast out there. What's that? I guess they would. It does. Yeah, it, it does. does. Um, I'm sorry. I got to interrupt you. I have Enzo hair all over my lap. <laughs> That's that his new finish. Well, you have become uh, one with the Enzo. Yes, you have. It's chosen you. Saying that that Wait, why is his prop hair is there? Constructed. <laughs> it has chosen like glitter, dude. It has chosen you. Glitter, it's glitter it's like on that. Fell thing? asleep in a strip no, joint. It just, it, it just like gets everywhere. You'll wake up and. and, and, and you're gonna have glitter. so many questions when you go home to your lady. I, yeah. thought, I thought it was fiberglass. It's not. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Which is worse? <laughs> it's like rolling around in insulation. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this stuff itches yet. S A W F T. Bobby learned that 205 Live is dead. Um, oh, oh, I brought up a Twitter thing. Um, he learned that that 205 Live is dead. Kyrie Sane is adorable, and the Hung Bucks just earned a personal pan pizza. Do you call them the Hung Bucks? I don't. I think that's a team in Chicago. No, that can't be. Do they each get their own, or do they have to split it? I the mean, Hung Bucks sound like the, the tag team at that burlesque show. Yeah. yeah. That could be too. That could be <laughs> yeah. my friend my friend's mom didn't know the difference of wrestlers, but would always pick up wrestlers for him and she's like she's like, Deke, I got you the Hudley boys. <laughs> to this day, we refer to them as the Hudley boys. Either team, either either of the four. Yeah. Uh uh, I, I don't know if this is learned or just a prediction in general, but John also says that No Mercy Bliss will do her moonsault on Naya. Emma will shoot in and throw Bliss out and steal the belt from her like she stole from Walmart. I forgot all about that. Was it Walmart? Yeah. What? It was probably Walmart. It's probably. I feel like yeah. if you if you're going to steal, go big. Um, and Dave learned that I've I've learned if you complain enough like Emma, you get what you want. Uh, if you, I, I think anybody that's worried about Emma. Shouldn't as much. She got new music and she's in a title match. I thought she was gone. I was gonna say, did you watch oh, any Hogan girl. stuff from the eighties? <laughs> <laughs> it's like God. That is true. Yeah. Um. That, oh, that's uh, that's uh, their three man tag name of Adam Page and the Bucks. No. Oh. So there you go. Um. What the hell did I uh, learn? Uh, Dave, Dave learned that if you complain enough, like Emma, you get what you want. Oh no! Yeah. No, we just said that. We said. We oh, just, okay. My bad. I didn't hear you say it. It's all right. It's all right. We got a weird mic thing with him. So, um, yeah. I learned. I learned that uh, uh, Big Show spent a lot of time on a tarp rope during that match. Mm-hmm. Dude, I was waiting for that thing to snap. It's double, triple, super duper reinforced, though. The, the yeah, the ropes what? aren't. Why wouldn't anyone wrestle in a ring that wasn't double reinforced? If you, I, I'm going to tell you, I've been in some rings that have not been reinforced by anything. <laughs> that, like, if you ever don't want to be a wrestler, come to the show for the rings put together. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, there's only three boards under it. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Let me show you that one. I was going to say, I've I've helped build a ring, so yeah. I don't. I'm not yeah, sure I trust yeah, him. Yeah. I like no. whenever I'm about to get in, like, hey, don't bump in the corner. The Why? Because you'll die. Oh, okay. yeah, no. We found we. Uh, so I was walking around the ring match. before the Cage Fury show. Yeah, and, and I'm just kind of you know just kind of walking it, and you know, and 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 kind of like notice some weird bumps and stuff in it because it's like the smaller trainer ring right yeah and then like i'm feeling it and i'm like what the hell is this and we pull up like a pull out a little bracket from underneath the the canvas yeah that somebody left there and i'm just like what the hell like i could just it was like in that and it was in that spot if somebody was doing one of them like you know uh apron ddt something or others yeah it was, somebody was going to have a really, really bad night. People are always like, "What's well, the hardest you... part of the ring, Sork?" Yeah, the, the hardest, hardest part, part of the ring. Of the ring. <laughs> yep. Well, that's, people are always like, "Why do you take bumps on the floor all the time?" It's like, "Cause I trust concrete. Like I know what's. You yeah, know what, what you're getting. There's I know no, what's, no I know surprises. What's be, yeah, <laughs> but there's not going to be any bumps. Listen, this building has been standing here longer than this ring. <laughs> yeah, it wins my confidence. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted. I was. I wanted to take a hip toss into an orchestra pit once on the show. <laughs> And uh, I, there was like, oh a, it was God. a, it was a union show. And I said to one of the union stage hands, I'm like, is that orchestra pit concrete or is it wood? He goes, why would you ask? I'm like, cause I'm going to get a garbage can put over my head and get hip tossed over into it. And when I land, I want to make sure that I don't go through it, that I stop. And he was like, that's the dumbest question anyone's ever asked me. I'm like, so it's concrete. And he goes, yeah. I'm like, cool. 
<laughs> Surely no. <laughs> I lost my hearing from that bump, which is hilarious. That's never happened before. Surely no. Let's get some plugs in. First of all, you were re- featured most re- recently on a, uh, a charity show, Stomp Out Cancer, which is available on IndieWrestling.us. Per- portion of proceeds still go to American Cancer Society. Where else? Where the best line I've heard in a while, I'm going to kill G Raver for cancer, was uttered. <laughs> Did I say that? Yeah, you said that. <laughs> yeah, you said that. That's <laughs> stuck in my mind. You have to understand, understand when I go through the curtain, like the nice, n- normal me that says stuff, people say, You said this to a human being. And I'm like, What? And I'm like, Oh, yeah. Also, you almost ran me over because you went through the, the side curtain instead of the entrance. Yeah, we didn't know oh, where you were coming from. So it's like, Where the hell is it? And then, like, a, a trash can or chair goes flying. Oh, by I kicked the chair as hard as I could. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And by me, that was set up by the entrance. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Everything worked out well. I think I had a lot of people in my way. They would have gotten hit first. So. Yeah, exactly. I was, I was not. That's because I, I grew up watching Bruiser Brody matches, and I'm like, well, I just want to just break everything. Like, like Once I go out there, I'm like, break everything. <laughs> Crush everything. Yeah. But also, you appear uh, still regularly at PWX, correct? Yes. Uh, there's a show uh, this Saturday, which I won't be on, but that's probably a better reason to go see the show. There it is go. the Sean Evans Memorial Tournament, which there's a lot of Great matches in it, and that's uh, September 9th, I think. What is that? Saturday's the 9th. Yeah, it'd be the 9th. Yeah, and but that's they've been on some. The last show we actually drew pretty well, so they're mm-hmm. fun shows to go to. They're a little smaller than than some of the shows you go to here, but there's a lot of really young talent, and you know, come and make the crowds busy. I always like it because it's 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 their own building, yeah. So like they really kind of suited it for a wrestling show. Mm-hmm. And and they can do some interesting things in there because of that. And also, like, they have good lighting that they don't have to truck in or anything like that. Yeah, and the nice thing, we've been doing a lot of stuff that kind of changes up the format and uh, makes it... It's getting a little different and it's getting a little more Lucha underground but in a different way and more, like, more violent, which is totally cool with me. Because, uh, like, he's like... Because he, I said, well, I, I don't ever want to lock up anymore. And I don't want to... They want people to, like, shake, like, pump fists before the matches. And I was like, I'm never going to do that. So, and I, you know what I mean, it's like, and I'm not going to lock up and I don't even want to come out when they announce my name anymore. I just want to fight. Just come like barging out of the back like some maniac. Like, okay. So usually that's my, how can I change things? <laughs> Every badge, you're like, here's how to start a match. Duck the first punch, hit me in the face as hard as you can. And then we'll just, we'll figure it out. That's how, that's how like. Whatever like, next that feels right at that yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> I'm all about the, the artistic feel of getting punched in the face properly. Go. Uh, we're going to do an Indie Mayhem show with uh, Shirley Doe here. If you're with us on the live stream or check out the Indie Mayhem show, subscribe to that. A lot of great stuff on there. Most recently, we just released our interview with Magnum CK, which was a great hour long interview where we talked about wrestling and theater and the marking out pay per view. I'm not sorry, pay per view. Uh, uh, documentary. It was on Amazon Prime. Close enough to the pay per view. It's kind of like WWE Network. Um, and uh, I think Jack, no, no, not him. Jack Pollock is uh, also uh, on the agenda for that as well. Uh, that's going to be released here in the next couple of weeks and a few other great ones. And we've had a great line of people since we moved in the studio here. So, and, 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 and Mad Mike's yawning, so I better wrap this up. Uh, <laughs> it's a late night, I know. Slinging toys, right? Uh, but it, any- it's not that late of a night, Sorg. It's yes. not that late. Thank you, Shirley Doe, for joining us. Thank you. Chad to Shad. You're welcome. From the Enzo duo. <laughs> I was hey. forced into that gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> and man, my four eight eight three on the Twitter. Check him uh, hashtag mm on the at mayhem show Twitter, where he's he's the yes. gil- diligent live tweeter of things like Lucha Underground and other things at late at night. Yes, indeed, and and midweek war, uh, we will actually be doing the obituary of two hundred five live this week. <laughs> apparently, so apparently, so. There you go. Uh, so, so if you have any well wishes, uh, please, you know, send them along to good times at wrestlingmamshow dot com. Uh, yeah, uh, if you want, if you have a good epitaph for two hundred five live, please let us know. So is Larry going <laughs> clothes shopping with Enzo soon? <laughs> oh, we need it. Oh man, it's makeover time. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Man. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.